Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Finger. I'm director of the New York Eye Cancer Center and a professor of ophthalmology. This is part five of a five-part series. This is a test, a test to help you review and remember what you've learned through parts one through four. Don't worry about getting a piece of paper. Each test question will be followed by the next answer slide to indicate whether you are right or wrong or made the correct selections. After all, there is no grade more important than how well you diagnose your subsequent patients. With that in mind, I sincerely hope you all get 100% correct and thus confirm my teaching. If you happen to be bewildered by the entire exercise, then send me an email so I can make my videos even better. Now good luck. Question 1. Which type of pigment blocks fluorescence? Orange pigment? Melanocytoma pigment? Retinal pigment epithelial pigment? Or all of the above? The answer to question 1 is all of the above. Remember, pigment blocks fluorescence. It's one of the main themes of this series. The most common presenting growth pattern for primary intraocular retinoblastoma is endophytic or towards the vitreous, exophytic or from the retina towards the choroid, vitreous seeds or mixture of the above. I have to admit this is a bit of a tough question because the actual presentation or stage of retinoblastoma is dependent upon where the child might live and thus their access to an eye cancer specialist. This was documented with medical evidence published in 2021 where a multicenter international registry study showed that socioeconomic status of a country will affect the stage of presentation and thus the patient's survival. At the New York Eye Cancer Center, however, the most common presentation for retinoblastoma is mixed. Choroidal metastasis is the most common intraocular cancer. Relatively fast growing, these tumors quickly infiltrate their surrounding uvea and consume the overlying retinal pigment epithelium. They are characterized by their rapidly created poorly insulated leaking tumor blood vessels. Which is the photographic characteristic that is most commonly seen with choroidal metastasis? The answer is D, exudative retinal detachment. Metastatic cancer to the choroid which is usually from the breast or lung, will exhibit secondary exudative retinal detachments due to their poorly formed aneurysmal leaking tumor blood vessels. I'm going to give you some time to think about this one. Here we have two columns. You are expected to link the type of tumor with the most important finding mentioned in this lecture series. Here you have 20 seconds. Okay, just in case you didn't have that piece of paper, here goes. Choroidal hemangioma is coarse vascular pattern. Choroidal melanoma is double circulation. That was due to those formed tumor blood vessels seen beneath the retinal circulation. Choroidal osteoma is slow filling into that bony tumor as well as late fluorescein washout leading to intense late staining. The retinal capillary hemangioma was a high flow system where it was crucial to get those early phase images on the angiogram. Choroidal metastasis were characterized by a starry sky of microaneurysms, many more than you would see with a melanoma or even hemangioma. Lastly, 
The retinal cavernous hemangioma has those pathognomonic low-flow saccular aneurysms with sedimentation that makes them appear half-filled in the mid to late phases of the fluorescein angiogram. While I didn't cover this last question in the lecture, it does deserve exposure. The question is, where can I read free information, see images, listen and view lectures on eye cancer? Well, I've published an online text and atlas in the form of my website, eyecancer.com. There's also over 35 podcasts on various aspects of eye cancer, some technical and some not so technical, all worth listening, listening to for the eye care professional. I also have this YouTube channel and it has multiple lectures that I've given for many years which have been updated for your education. So the answer is all of the above. And feel free to bookmark them and come back periodically as I add new material. I sincerely hope that you found these lectures of help in the care of your eye tumor patients. I think that learning about photography and angiography gives us all greater insight into the form, structure, and pathophysiology of eye tumors. We see their effects on adjacent tissues, and that teaches us about the strengths and limits of our diagnostic methods. We thank the Eye Cancer Foundation for their support and hope you visit iCancerCure.com.